You feel like you're walking through a movie set. It's incredible. We have it almost to ourselves. It's just, I don't know, I'm having the best day. We've ordered, I guess, sheep insides. Steve's really not feeling the best. Mom, we're on YouTube now. Good morning, guys, and welcome to Edinburgh. I was going to say Bur Birmingham. Steve was getting me confused earlier. We are talking about Birmingham. Anyway, we're in Edinburgh, Scotland. We're going to be taking you around the city today. It is it, what we've seen so far. It looks absolutely stunning, like a fairy tale almost. We've come down to our coffee shop, which is in the area that we're staying, just south of the old town here of Birmingham. Ignore my sopping wet hair. Our Airbnb didn't have a hairdryer, so it is drying natural today. We've just placed our coffee order, and this guy... <laughs> Needs coffee. It's so funny because whenever we do a vlog in the morning, I'm always like, yeah, let's go, let's go. And he is just, he's like miserable, like on a whole other level, until he gets that shot of coffee and he's laughing behind me. Is it not true? It's 100% true. I think yeah. I've got something wrong with me. <laughs> it's a call to caffeine addiction. <laughs> Thank you so much. There's a little there on the side. Amazing. Cheers. I don't know what it is with the UK, but whenever I order an Americano, they always ask if I want milk with it. So in Australia, you would never think to put milk in an Americano. It's essentially a long black. Um, but I took them up on that today and thought, why not give it a try? Not bad. I think today's a holiday or there's something going on in the city, the old city. Yeah, we were reading signs yesterday that there's restrictions on parking because they have some political march for independence on today, it's Saturday the 2nd of September. We're not entirely sure, but we're going to try and avoid the main sort of areas that it was indicating that the march was going to take place. So, Which was? Um, it was the Royal Mile, <laughs> which is, this is essentially where we want to go. So that's exactly where we're going now. <laughs> but we're here early and the march said it started at 1pm. So we're going to try and see that in the morning and then avoid that in the afternoon. Approaching the old town is right about when you get smacked in the face with the contrast of old and new. So the modern buildings and the old historical buildings. It's almost overwhelming to see because it's just that, I don't even have any words to be honest. It's that unique and overwhelming. I don't know if I just said that, but I probably did, but it literally feels like you've been picked up and put back in time hundreds of years ago. You feel like you're walking through a movie set almost. It's incredible. Also, I am extremely grateful to be walking around in a t-shirt in Edinburgh in September. I know it doesn't seem like a big thing, but the weather really does make or break the day, especially if you've got a whole day of activities planned outside because we're too cheap to pay to go into things, essentially. <laughs> anyway, we're here. I think this is Victoria Street. Yep. yep. All right, and we're gonna go for a little wander around here. And there's some famous Harry Potter store here. It was super busy when we came here yesterday. So this is the store I was just talking about in relation to Harry Potter. So if you are a fan, i.e. my friend Shelly, let us know the significance of this place. It's printed on the window museum and just under it it says official Harry Potter merchandise. So I don't know if it was a museum before they filmed scenes of Harry Potter here. And then they've just jumped on board of the whole Harry Potter franchise. Well it says it specialises in curated collection of home interior and unusual gift ideas. Anyway, this is boring and who cares? So it's a gift shop. <laughs> yeah. Behind me here is the Edinburgh Castle. We are planning on taking a walk up there. I don't think we're actually gonna go inside. We're happy to admire it from afar. So 
I've come down here to the Witch's Well, which is right out the front of Edinburgh Castle. Witch hunts were a horrific part of the history here in Edinburgh. And right in this very spot, hundreds of people were burnt, strangled and executed right in this area. Oh, it's eerie. But this is the monument. Very small. along the Royal Mile now and I think before we check out any more of the sites we might grab some lunch because it is coming on to midday and given how busy the city is at the moment I'm assuming all the restaurants around here are going to fill up pretty quickly. So I've just come down to the restaurant that we were going to have lunch at. It's called Edinburgh Little Larder. The line is already out the door and I don't think it's open yet, but I'm going to show you. So there's about 20 people waiting. Steve's really not feeling the best. I think I said that earlier. So I think we're going to put the camera down today and we will pick it back up tomorrow. So not every day is a good fun day when you're traveling. All right, we're back. Same day. It's been about three hours though. Yeah. I was not feeling great. Today's so, been a whirlwind, hasn't it? It's one of those days where I woke up and just could not be effed doing anything. <laughs> had a headache, yeah. felt really, I don't know, just down. sluggish down. Yeah. But went home, drank some water, ate some food, had a nap, and surprise, surprise, I feel better. I said that from the start that he, <laughs> one, he hadn't eaten at all. Two, he hadn't had any water, which is quite normal. Like, you don't really drink water anyway. Yeah, I'm a boy. I've got to be told to drink water. Yeah, yeah. I've got to be told to drink water. But I've had a burst of energy, so we're going to head back into the old town and pick up where we left off. I'm really hoping I'm capturing these buildings and doing them justice because it seems like everywhere we look, left, right, behind us, in front of us, the buildings are insane. <laughs> yeah. They're amazing how... The detail. Yeah, the detail of them. Oh, I just kicked you. How <laughs> well right. preserved or what's the word called? Maintained. Maintained they yeah. are. Yep. Insane, but we're about to go into this church here now. This might be one of the most beautiful churches I've ever seen. This is St. Giles Cathedral right in the heart of Edinburgh Old City. This church I was reading was founded by King David I back in the 12th century and it's been an active, active working church for not over 900 years. The stained glass windows are just... I think the ceilings and the columns are amazing. It like, kind of reminds me of some rather familiar in Barcelona. Barcelona, yeah. It's a gothic sort of architecture style. It's really, really mind-blowing. I honestly can't stop looking up. I've nearly walked into about 10 people, just <laughs> filming and walking. So Edinburgh is a city that is constantly involving, evolving and improving. And in the 19th century, the Victorians came through and restored and essentially renovated the old town as they were establishing and founding the new town. They've done such an incredible job. The contrast between the tall dark spires on top of the buildings with the greenery of the beautiful cliffs and parks that they've got here is absolutely, it's, it's so striking. We've also noticed a lot of these statues, which you could probably see behind me, have cones on their heads or on them yeah. in general. Is this a thing in Edinburgh or is this just people getting way too lit on the weekends <laughs> and throwing cones up on the statues? Because we've seen it now on about three different statues in the old town. I think the latter. It was a massive weekend here in Edinburgh. I think the end of the film fest, not the film fest, the fringe festival and whatever's happening today, there's a lot going on. <laughs> I have a love-hate relationship with the cobblestones through Europe. I love the look of it, but I can't stand dragging our suitcases over it. I was going to say, how can you have a love relationship with the cobblestones? The suitcases are an absolute nightmare. So my suitcase, the wheel broke off 
the very start of the trip in London and Christy's suitcase also broke, I think from Singapore to it's London right, as well. Yeah. It split. So we're both getting around with broken suitcases. Mine's held together by masking tape. And my wheels glued on with super glue. <laughs> I'm just talking to that lady randomly. I thought it was you. I'm just <laughs> saying how good does that smell? Did she agree with you? She didn't respond to me. I just thought you were crazy. Yeah. So a little bit of useless information that I found out when we were researching here. That clock up there is actually three minutes fast and the reason is because it's right opposite the train station and it just promotes people to get to their train on time. That's the train station right there, Edinburgh Waverley, which is their main train station. Good idea. It's like most people how they set their watches a few minutes forward so they aren't late. Um, My name's Charlie, Charlie? this is Bobby. Yeah. Watch the kitchen then. It's our name, so Christy and Steve. Christy and Steve, yeah, right Gibb Trip. Ma'am, we're on Gibb Trip now. Well, that was Charlie and Bobby from Glasgow. So if you're watching this, hello. It was awesome to meet you guys. And the rest of the family. And the rest of the family, yes. Hello. That was fun. Spun my head, but I loved it. Always welcome to the new subscribers. Yes, always. Make sure you subscribe. If you ever lose Christie, she's by the ice cream truck. What are you doing? I'm just looking at it. <laughs> I'm just looking. Do you no. want an ice cream? No, I don't know. Maybe. We've left the old town and we've come across to the new town. The new town's known for a couple of things. One, it's shopping and we've stopped in and grabbed some things from H&M. Yes. I grabbed a, another black t-shirt because you can never have too many black t-shirts. Mm -hmm. We've also come across here to get a different perspective on the castle mm -hmm. and the Scott Monument. We're walking through the Princess Street Gardens at the moment. It's so beautiful. There's so many people out. It's a beautiful day. People have their drinks, their wine, beer and snacks and naughty cigarettes that we can smell lingering throughout. <laughs> but it's a beautiful place to come and just stroll around and enjoy the nature. Alrighty, so it's the next day and we've come down to this beautiful castle that you can see behind us, Craig Miller Castle, which is about 30 minutes, I think, yep. outside of Edinburgh on a bus. Mm -hmm. The reason we came here is because we're huge Outlander fans. So if you've watched season three of the series, you might recognize the castle behind us. This is Ardsmuir Prison where they captured Jamie and Claire came and rescued him essentially. So they use the exterior, the stairwell and the courtyard of the castle in the series. So it's super cool if you're a fan of Outlander. Let's go check it out inside. Oh, well. This was the main dining hall of the castle. They would have had beautiful coloured painted tapestries hanging off the walls, colourful beams, and this is where everyone ate and drank. I could just imagine a huge wooden table here, just in front of that massive fire palace. Yeah. Just people eating, drinking, Yeah, partying. live music, yep. dancing. It's just amazing that we're standing here in something that was built in the 15th century. Mm -hmm. And it's so well intact. I don't know how much reconstructive work they've actually done to bring it up to what it is today. But either way, this is pretty amazing. Let's continue up this spiral staircase to the top of the tower. So there's a sign here saying this little tower overlooking the dining area was that could have been used as a storage room. I could imagine it have been used for making announcements and speeches. Come and check it out. This looks like where the DJ would stand. <laughs> this is the prime DJ spot. Absolutely, yep. Obviously no DJs back then, but... You never know. Yeah. Bagpipes? Okay. Yeah. Wow. So of course 
being in the finest bedroom of the castle, it's bound to have an ensuite. Show, let me show you the toilet and what we think is the toilet. It's definitely the toilet. Check this out. I'm scared. This is where you would have sat and done your business. It is, and Steve was saying before that um, he saw a chute coming off the side of Edinburgh Castle and he was saying that that was a toilet and I was like, there is no way that that would have been a toilet. Turns out he could be right. I'm 100% right. Like, what else could this be? Take a look at this. It's at perfect height and then it's just a straight chute down outside the castle. This is the coolest place I think we've ever been. And the fact that it we have it all to ourselves is just, I don't know, I'm having the best day. It's crazy how many rooms there are. We think we've seen the whole castle and then we just keep finding rooms and staircases and alleys. Like, look at this. There's this staircase here that goes down. All right, this castle just keeps on going. So that was one of the best experiences I think we've had in mm -hmm. Edinburgh so far. Yep. That was amazing. If anyone is in Edinburgh or planning to come to Edinburgh, make sure you put this on your list because that was incredible. So good. And we actually don't have any intention of going into the Edinburgh Castle. And I think this more than makes up for that. It was awesome. Wasn't that busy so you could cruise at your own pace, yep. get all the photos for us, mm -hmm. get all the videos. The staff was amazing. They gave you lots of information. Mm -hmm. We're a bit hungry, so we're going to head back into Edinburgh, close to where we're staying, and we're going to head to a pub and get some haggis. Wah! I'm pretty excited to order haggis, actually. I've yeah. seen a lot of people, as we're sort of <laughs> sitting down having breakfast and dinner, a lot of people ordering it. So I'm pretty excited to taste this. Is it the national dish? I, yeah. It's probably definitely the most recognized dish here in Scotland. Yep. So, three, two, one. All right, so we've come down to a little local pub called The Abbey. We've ordered two things, steak and ale pie and haggis. We asked what the two most traditional Scottish menu items were and the lady said that, so that's what we're having. So while we're waiting for our food, I've ordered a flight of whiskey. I'm not a huge whiskey drinker, but whiskey is very popular here in Scotland. So I thought, hey, why not give it a go? I can't remember exactly what these were, but she said start from this side and work your way this way. And what else did you get there, Steve? I've also got <laughs> beer. Is that a pint? It is a pint. And some water. So I've got five drinks on the go. <laughs> but let's give the first whiskey a taste. Christy says I always make a face when I drink whiskey. Yeah. So let's see. It's like you make this face where you definitely do not like it. And it's like you try to hide it, but you just see now you're trying to hide it by laughing. You're fooling no one. You're so, fooling no one. So like I said, I'm not a huge whiskey drinker, but I feel the older that I'm, but I feel the older that I'm getting, I should start liking whiskey. So every now and then I do try and indulge in a whiskey or two. I hate whiskey, I hate most spirits, so I'm not even gonna try it, but this guy can do all the drinking for me. This is actually a whiskey bar as well. We didn't know when we came here but it's the Abbey Whiskey Bar. There's a lot of whiskey bars around here in Edinburgh that we've seen, so... I mean, it's. I think it's the national drink of Scotland. They. That's where they distill most of it, isn't it? I'm not sure. We're no whiskey kind of We don't know what we're talking about. Okay. I guess. <laughs> uh, yep. Thank you. Sorry, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. So I'm lucky enough to try the haggis for the first time here. So from what I have read, it consists of offal from a sheep, so lungs, liver, heart, um, encased in a sheep stomach. It's also mixed with oatmeal, onions, and some other herbs and spices. So I am nervous. All right, and I believe that this is maybe parsnip and sweet potato. I don't actually know, but we're here for the haggis, so that's What's what this we're one? going for. Oh, this is a whiskey sauce, a cream whiskey sauce. So I'm going to try it without the sauce first. All right. Okay. I'm going to try it by itself. Oh God. Okay. All right. All right. All right. 
That's delicious. That is honestly, it just tastes like a sausage. Is there anything like it. black pudding that we had in Not London, really like England? Black pudding. It's kind of, it's, it's quite salty. Um, it just tastes like the inside of a, like a sausage essentially. So I'm going to try it with everything on there. That's really nice. If you don't think about what you're eating, you never know. It's amazing. Like, I don't know what I'm doing, but all right. Mm. Oh, that's so good. That's really, really nice. I like that. I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing, but it tastes exactly like a steak and pepper meat pie in Australia. I don't know if that says good things about pies in Australia or bad things, but the 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 haggis itself, it even has the same texture of the meat you would find in a, a meat pie. It is really nice. If you ever get a chance, anyone watching this, if you ever get a chance to eat it, make sure you do. So moving on from the haggis, we've got the steak and ale pie. Yum. It's got a huge chunk of puff pastry on the top and then inside just looks like tender, slow cooked beef. It looks like chunks of beef. But look at that. Wow. It just collapses. I, such a mess. I actually don't know how to eat this. So I might actually take this off to the side, cut a chunk off. The pastry's just falling apart. Like, <laughs> add a little bit of that beef. It looks super hot. I can't even get the pastry on there. Uh, Is it good? Mm just really beefy, gravy, tender. It looks so chunky. Yeah, look at that. This is a really good, like, cold, cold, wet, miserable day sort of a meal. And we also got some potato skins as well. What a face. All right, so dinner was awesome. Great place, great restaurant, great food, awesome stuff. Can't recommend eating haggis enough Yep. at the Abbey, Abbey. or yep. Scotland in general. Yep, it was awesome. But I think we're gonna wrap up the Edinburgh vlog here. Yeah, this vlog's been a little bit chaotic, so yeah. hopefully it all comes together in the <laughs> edit. And yep. if you've made it this far, thank you. And if you <laughs> like watching us, subscribe. <laughs> and we will see you next time when we're actually on the way to pick up we're going to get a camper van. We're, tomorrow we're heading off to Glasgow to pick up a camper van for a week. So that should be very interesting. And then we'll be travelling around Scotland for six, seven days. Yep. So yeah, stay tuned and see we'll you see you next time. See Bye. you. This is only if you're an Outlander fan. Jamie, Sam, peed in that toilet. I'm going in there to take a selfie. We'll see how excited he is. He's not usually a very excitable person. Like he doesn't usually... Here we go. How was that? <laughs> Got my selfie. <laughs> oh my god.